Welcome to Hood Champion Boxing and Sports. In boxing, we find a way to win or we find a way to lose. So the question is, we know Adrian Broner is tired. We know Adrian Broner has a lot going on. But, you know, how, how does it get to this point with these athletes who, you know, are multimillionaires and have the world at their hands, you know, and the world beneath their feet? They have access to so much. And the things we see them showing that they have access to is, is mostly depreciating assets or um, materialistic items, uh, large crowds, partying, alcohol, women, houses, you know, again, that's materialistic stuff. So when, when you look at that, right, and a lot of people to this day still think that brings happiness. Money brings happiness. Don't get me wrong, man. If somebody comes and writes me a $1 million check, I'm going to be happy. But can, can that $1 million check sustain my happiness, you know? And I would say probably not. It creates convenience, but it, it doesn't create uh, long-term happiness. For Adrian Broner, you, you gotta, you gotta, we got to really look at this guy and see what direction he's going because... There are a lot of athletes who have committed suicide. There are a lot of athletes who, you know, or just people who have these little subtle hints to suggest that we need to converge on them immediately. And for, for, for some athletes, it's easier for people to reach out and help them because their personalities oppose to the, to the latter half of athletes who kind of always have their quills out or sharp tongues or had bad attitudes, it makes a person want to keep their distance. And Adrian Broner is in one of those situations where even those in his close circle have distanced themselves from him. And it's at a point now to where, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you, I am very concerned about this, about this guy. You know, you look at, the Johnny Tapias, the Edwin Valeros. There was a young teenager, amateur boxer who just committed himself. Uh, George Foreman's daughter, Frida Foreman, five and one as a pro. She committed herself. She she committed suicide. And there are a lot of other athletes, uh, uh, boxers who have uh, suffered with mental health issues. Some have uh, turned to drugs and alcohol. Some have committed suicide. No one's still sure about Arturo Gotti's death. We believe he was murdered, but some people are saying it was a suicide, but we don't know. You look at the NFL, you look at just, you know, uh, I think it was tennis. You look at all the sports. These guys and girls have all, they have what a lot of people would say is that they're living a dream life. Because we just see what's on the outside is that they have money, they have cars, they have the people around them. They seem to have the perfect lifestyle, but we don't see what's going on behind the scenes. And what you're getting right now with Adrian Broner is a peek behind his tent flaps to see that this, this fellow needs help. And I, I am very concerned that, um, I'm very concerned that Adrian Broner is definitely going down, going down a path of no return. He, need, he really needs, he needs help. He needs a lot of help, man. You know, how many years has it been where he's been his life has just been out there in the news, on social media. Um, and it's nothing positive. Even had a thing with the girl, the uh, cash me outside girl, right? You know, she took an had an opportunity, man, and she took it to publicly lynch him because he was there, you know, messaging her and stuff like that. <sighs> you know what? Some people say, well, it's his fault. And I say, it's, it's not just his fault. It's a lot of people's fault who are around him and who weren't willing to confront those tough issues. And even if it resulted in an argument or getting into a physical fight, that's your friend, that's someone you care about. You gotta tell them when they're wrong. And you gotta stay, you gotta stay on them, man, to get them to turn around. Now, I, I know Adrian Broner from what I see Seems like he can be a bit stubborn and bullheaded. But that's why it's so important to have a community of people 
uh, around you that can say, hey, you're messing up. And even for them sometimes to kind of step back, let you fall on your face, then, you know, come back, help pick you up, dust you off, and try to get you back on the right track. And it sounds like people have done that. You know, Adrian Broner has had, you know, opportunity after opportunity to try to get his boxing career going. He's received huge fight after huge fight, even when he's proven after the Madonna fight that he struggled with letting his hands go because he's worried about getting hit and getting hurt. And you look now, the guys at Showtime, the PBC guys, they decided to take another chance on Adrian Broner and bring him back against Omar Figueroa. And they figured these two ex-champions, two phenomenal fighters who it looks like they're getting beyond their mental health issues, this is the fight to make. And Omar Figueroa is pushing through it, and Adrian Broner wasn't able to. It makes you wonder who is there for Adrian Broner. He is reaching out, and, and I'm not. And look, I'm not. I'm not here to try to save anybody, because it's like uh, someone posted in the comments. You know, let's say the same devil that brought him all that success is the same devil that's kind of uh, created his downfall. You know what I'm saying? And that's very true. But for Adrian Broner, when I'm looking at the the Tapias, the Paleros, um, even De La Hoya, uh, and a lot of these other fighters out here, man, they just can't, you know, hey, Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, you guys didn't know the man was on cocaine and depressed and all that. So a lot of these fighters, man, you guys do your homework. It's, the, the list goes on and on, man. Even the great Julio Cesar Chavez, you know, Sugar Shane Moses, these are guys who, you know, these, these names, I know you guys know these names, and there are other names out there who struggle with mental health issues. Uh, some turn to substance abuse, others turn to alcohol, and others just went into serious depression. And when you hear these guys come and talk about Mike Tyson, but when you hear people talk about it, it's almost like, wow, he, he or she was going through that? Because they're human. And I think we, f we forget, because of the the celebrity status that they are human and they struggle and they hurt and there was something I was watching right they got this I don't watch a whole lot of YouTube unless I'm watching boxing right there's this guy Ch Charleston White or whatever and I saw a clip yesterday where he was talking about how he was he ended up going to jail or something he was in Texas and while he was in jail as a juvenile, I think he was 17, about to be 18. But anyway, they, they were, the, the judge was going to put him in a adult system, adult prison, and not the juvenile. So anyway, he, according to him, he was just totally against the system and didn't like, uh, you know, a certain race of people. And he was just all about being uh, this, representing this gang, right? And he said he was trying his best to be the most disruptive most ignorant, most violent person he could be. And he said there were four people who converged around him, two people who are uh, of the opposite race and that he was taught to never, ever trust. And the other two, two people were men who represented what he didn't have in his life, so he didn't respect and want to hear their voice. And he said what happened to those four people made him realize that he was just a hurt person and he needed guidance he needed love and he said it was amazing what love was able to do to him and the change that happened in him and he talked about the, the family of the person he murdered how they forgave him and when they forgave him he said he couldn't hate no more he couldn't be angry no more and he was more trying to figure out how in the world could these people forgive me for killing their loved one and he said that changed him and, and i say all that to say this Adrian Broner is, 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 is kind of a situation that, when I think about that guy, where's the love for this guy? The genuine love, you know? Um, who's going to be able to really touch, touch this guy and help him realize that there's another way of doing things? Because he, he seems to want the assistance from Floyd Mayweather, but 
I don't know the whole backstory and all that. I, I know what I read here, but no one's, I haven't been part of any uh, phone conversations. I'm not in those groups uh, in their circles. But I do know that he's, he seems to have this, like, uh, desperate need to have a conversation with Floyd Mayweather. And I'm not sure what that's all about. We know how he's always spoke highly of Floyd Mayweather. The big bro, the big bro, Pauli Malignaggi has clowned him about trying to talk and laugh and like Floyd Mayweather, even his mannerisms. But when you look at it now, you know, that may, that may be something that Floyd Mayweather needs to engage in. But would you engage, if you were Floyd Mayweather, in helping Adrian Broner when the last time Floyd was somewhat mixed up and uh, some issues with a friend of his and a friend ended up killing a woman on um, over the internet or while they were streaming Facebook Live or whatever. He ended up, while they were Facebooking or streaming or whatever, some, some shit, he ended up killing the girl and killing herself and Floyd Mayweather witnessed all that. So you, can, you gotta also understand Floyd Mayweather in the space he's in and he probably doesn't want to get close to anything that reminds him of that situation that he had to endure and to see his friend murder someone and murder himself. And uh, again, with Floyd Mayweather, he doesn't talk a lot about it, but he can't leave his mind be behind either. And you don't want to go and start peeling those scabs back, scabs back or breathing life back into those, uh, th th those things that once brought you a lot of just, uh, you know, hurt. And um, I, don't, I, don't, I can understand why Floyd would keep his distance from, from Broner. But at the end of the day, Got to figure out what what can be done for AB. Because to be honest with you, I, I'm not sure. But when I sit here out on the internet and I look at you know athletes who committed suicide, boxers who committed suicide, boxers who had struggled with mental health issues, and I see all these different names and some of the things that were the triggers that caused it. Uh, uh, Broner fits. He 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 fits into that class, and I am very concerned about him. I don't think this is a one of those things, a shock and awe thing, trying to get attention. I don't think this is a marketing thing. I don't think this is something to breathe life into a return in a couple months to make his return even bigger, to get him a bigger fight purse. I think, I really think he has some struggles. He has some serious issues. I saw uh, an image where he looked super shredded, but someone else said they saw some images where he didn't look in shape. So you never know what the internet, people and photos, but bottom line, the physical doesn't matter. He needs to get himself uh, together mentally, and I hope he can do that. But um, I just hate to hear something down the road that this man is up commit committing suicide or doing something crazy because people start communicating their intentions, man, and they say someone who truly wants to commit suicide, it's not going to be an unsuccessful attempt. If someone really wants to kill themselves, it's going to be a lethal uh, method used, and they're going to do it, and you can't stop them. I think AB is kind of... Just from listening to him, just from my experience in dealing with people and stuff I've been trained in, I'd say he's, he's right in the middle and uh, it needs some intervention ASAP and to try to really get this man back on the right side of the street. And I would say it's going to take people like those who converged on Mike Tyson to help get him straight because, but the person has to want to do it too. But if you look where Mike Tyson was and where he is now, and his every day is a struggle for him, but... He, he managed to, to, to figure things out and find a way to win. He doesn't win all the time, but he's getting a lot more wins than he's, than he's taking losses these days. And we need to see about getting Adrian Broner on that path. So good luck to him. Um, but that being said, man, leave your comments below. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Shout out to the veterans. AB, get yourself better. And as always, I'm in the breeze.